Hello, hi, welcome everybody. So today I am finally making a video that is very long overdue, something I promised you all a really long time ago and something I've been wanting to make pretty much ever since I started my channel. I just have never felt like it was the right time and I don't think I will ever feel like it's truly the right time, but I think that if I keep waiting for it to feel right, then I'll never make this video. So today I'm finally doing it and I'm giving you the A Clockwork Reader reading list, AKA my favorite books of all time. I mentioned the idea for this in a video last year, I think, when I was talking about some book that I really liked and I said that it kind of defined my taste in a lot of ways and I would add it to a list of books that I would consider to be part of the essential reading list, like the syllabus. If I were to make a syllabus for my YouTube channel, that book would be on it and that's where the idea for this kind of came about and a lot of you really liked that idea and you wanted to know more. But these are basically books that I feel like define my taste as a reader, my identity as a reader, books that are incredibly important to me, have shaped me, changed me, changed the way I think, and oftentimes have themes or messaging that really align with my beliefs or my values. So if you've ever been curious about my list of all-time favorites or the books that I would recommend to everybody, or you just really want a long, and I mean long, <laughs> list of recommendations of books to read if you have similar taste to me and you like a lot of my recommendations, this is the place for you. We're finally doing it. I have so many books to talk about. I literally didn't count. Um, I laid them all out on my bed. You, like, you don't even want to know what this looks like. <laughs> We're not even going to talk about them all in extreme detail because you've heard me talk about these books countless times on my channel. Um, I talk about them all the time. I just wanted to put them all in one place. But I also have another really, really exciting announcement that I specifically wanted to mention in this video because it felt like the perfect time and the perfect place to do it. And that is that I am starting my own book club on Fable. Yes, I am starting the A Clockwork Reader book club. That's the name I have so far. We can change that. If you guys want to name it something else, if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments down below. I'm open to ideas, but for now it's just the A Clockwork Reader book club. But I'm really, really excited about this. So like I mentioned, the book club is going to be done through Fable. And Fable is an app that is basically for book lovers, whether you want to find new books to read or discuss books you're reading with other people. There are tons of book clubs on there and you can join and read books along with other people and discuss those books. Or you can start your own private book clubs with just a few of your friends if you'd like to. Within each book club, there are different discussion rooms. There's a lobby where people can just introduce themselves and talk about non-bookish things. And then there will be discussion rooms based on each chapter for the book. So if you don't want any spoilers, you can easily avoid that by staying within whichever chapter you're still in. And then a final discussion room once you finish the book so everyone can discuss their final thoughts and give their reviews and everything. So it's really interactive, it's really easy to use, and it'll be so much fun to have a space for us to just discuss the books that we're reading. There are also a lot of different tools and features you can use on the app, like reading lists, so you can make like a TBR for yourself. It's also really easy to rate and review books on there, and you can even use half stars, which is so nice. <laughs> you can also read along in any way you choose, whether you have a copy of the book already, if you'd like to get it from the library, if you like to read on ebook or audiobook, whatever way, whatever format you prefer to read, it's totally up to you. But Fable also has their own e-reader through the app, so you can purchase the ebook through their app, and their e-reader allows you to make like notes and highlights and stuff in the book, and once you um, talk about them in the discussion rooms, those notes and stuff show up in the discussion sections as well, so other people can see the commentary and stuff that you made, which is really, really cool. So yeah, like I said, I'm so, so excited about all of this, and and I cannot wait to start this journey with you all and start this book club. I'm so excited. I'm even thinking about like monthly live shows again, if that's a thing you guys are interested in, because then we can take the discussions you have in app and we can talk about them on live too. So if you want to join the Clockwork Reader book club, you can download the Fable app for free. The link to my book club is in the description box below. So you just have to click it and join the book club and then introduce yourself in the club lobby so we can all greet each other and talk to each other and get to know one another a little bit more. And I'm sure a lot of you are curious what the first book pick is going to be and I already decided on it. I'm really excited about it. I have really really high hopes that I'm gonna love it and that hopefully we're all gonna love it and that is What the River Knows by Isabella Ibanez. This is the first book I believe in a YA duology. I don't know if it's a duology or it's gonna be a series but it just recently came out. This is an historical fantasy novel set in Egypt. It has a rivals to lovers romance and it seems to have really good like mystery and suspense and action and it sounds fantastic. It sounds exactly like the type of thing that would be on the A Clockwork Creek reading list, hence why I chose it to be our first book club pick. I mean, historical fantasy romance is like god tier genres for me, and you'll notice that in the rest of the recommendations I have to give to you today and the books I have to talk about. So yeah, I have very, very high hopes. Download the Fable app and join the book club so we can all read along together. And so again, thank you Fable for sponsoring this video. I'm so, so excited for the book club to get started. We are going to be reading the book from basically December through the beginning of January, so you have plenty of time to get started 
started on it. But if there are any books that you're all really interested in reading together, I'm always open to your suggestions. Leave them in the club lobby in the Fable app and we can talk about it and maybe we'll do some polls or something on there and I'll definitely take your input into what we read because this is a space for all of us. It's not just for me, it's for all of us, for this community. And yeah, I'm just, I'm so thrilled. All right, now quickly, one more thing before we get into all the books, I just want to remind you all that my journals, the A Clockwork Reader film and TV journal and the A Clockwork Reader reading journal are available in the link in the description box below. If you want to track the books that you read and journal about it or track the films and shows that you watch and journal about it, these are the perfect place to do that. Um, they'll make perfect gifts for the upcoming holiday season if that's something you're looking into as well. And also I'm thinking that when we do the book club, it might be fun to do a discussion room where people can maybe post about what they're journaling about. I think that might be a fun little thing to do. So yeah, anyway, just wanted to remind you all, link is in the description box as always to purchase these. So like I mentioned, I have a lot of books on this list, okay? <laughs> and at first I was gonna narrow it down to even fewer, like max 10 to 15 books and just give you like a top 10 list or something, but that was really hard. Like it was, it was impossible, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and I wanted something that felt kind of all encompassing. So I decided to go in a little bit of a different direction. That's why I chose so many books. And that's because I decided to separate this out by genre and category. So I have like at least three, four books or so in each category that I'm gonna talk about that I feel like kind of define my taste. So if you prefer to read classics or if you prefer to read series, then you can check out the books that are in that specific section. So that's how I've decided to kind of separate it out. And I feel like this gives you a better overall picture of my general taste. Maybe I thought about this too much, I don't know, um, but this was really important to me, okay? That's why it took me so long to make this video. <laughs> I also just wanna say, there might be a couple books that you notice are not on this list that I have previously said are some of my favorite books. I thought about this a lot, like I mentioned, um, and there are some books that I used to consider some of my all-time favorites, but upon further reflection, upon either rereading or learning new information about the content or listening to other reviewers or learning new information about the authors and how um, they're not really the type of people I want to support on my platform. I have decided to not include those books. Do I still like them? Yes, the books will always mean something to me on some level, but I'm not talking about them in my in my space, okay? It's my list, so it's my choice, and that's what I chose to do. So I know some of you are gonna be like, where's this book, where's that book? There's a reason certain things are not on this list, and there's a reason I don't wanna talk about them, and it's because I'm not platforming certain people. But yeah, anyway, without any further ado, let's get into the official Clockwork Reader reading list so that I can gush about these books for the millionth time. Okay, so the first section is going to be classics. So these are my favorite classic books, classic novels that I have read. Obviously, as will be the case with every single section, I've not read everything, so it'll be impossible for me to cover everything. I'm sure there'll be other books I'll read in the future that I will consider all-time favorites or maybe like even more than some of these. But for now, based on everything I've ever read in my life, this is my current list. So first and foremost we have to cover my favorite Jane Austen novels because I love Jane Austen and of all of her work that I've read which I do feel like I really need to reread everything <laughs> um, because it's been a really long time. I think I haven't read Mansfield Park or Persuasion. I can't remember. It's been a really long time and I've watched like films or adaptations for all of them so I've muddled them all in my head but it's one of those two that I haven't read but I've read everything else and I love all of the ones that I've read but these two at present are my favorite ones and that is Sense and Sensibility and Emma. Sense and Sensibility is a story about sisters specifically and I always love stories that cover that as a theme and Emma in my opinion this is probably my favorite one this one is just so good it is so funny it's so emotional and it's in my opinion I think the easiest to read the most accessible of all of her work it's just a fantastic book also a fantastic book love these both dearly love Jane Austen she's the OG okay like romance would not be what it is without her next up we have a book that I would consider probably in my like top 10 list of all-time favorite books and that is easily The Little Prince. I think I first read it when I was really young, but I didn't really process it or remember it all that much. And then I reread it for the first time early in high school, I think, and I just fell back in love. This is a story that's just like stuck with me ever since the first time I read it. It's just one of those things that is so heartwarming and beautiful and emotional, even though it's technically a children's story. I love art that can transcend age or any kind of demographic. And this is definitely one of those stories. It's timeless, it's classic for a reason, and it's absolutely beautiful. So if you've still never read this, like you really, really should, it's so short. My goal one day is to read it in the original French. So I hope to do that at some point. But yes, forever something I will deeply, deeply cherish. The next classic, of course, has to be The Picture of Dorian Gray. I've talked about this a lot since I read it for the first time last year because I just can't get it out of my head. This like really changed things 
for me. This made me discover an entirely new genre that I was not reading from very often and it's opened up like a whole new world for me. I didn't read much gothic horror. That was not something I'd really ventured into much until I read this and oh my god, like easily one of my favorite genres of all time now in any form, whether it's TV, movies, or books. So yeah, absolutely have to credit this for that. Such an incredible story, such fantastic commentary and insight. Um, it's one of those things that will get you thinking, but it's also really entertaining, mysterious, and will keep you on the edge of your seat. I absolutely think it should be on the top of your list if you want to get into reading classics. This one will not bore you. You will be entertained from beginning to end. Okay, the next classic I have is another one I've talked about countless times, and that is, of course, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I love this book, you all know that. Mysterious, haunting, thought-provoking, and just so, so beautifully written. I love a good book with an unnamed narrator, and this one is an OG and a classic when it comes to that in so many ways. I absolutely recommend this for anyone who's also getting into classics. Another book that will keep you on the edge of your seat and keep you entertained all the way through. Please, please read Rebecca if you want to read more classics. Okay, and then the final classic book on my list is one that I don't talk about as much on here, um, but this is the book that like got me into reading classic novels. This is the book that kind of pushed me over the edge and got me to expand what I read, because before this I really mostly just liked reading YA and fantasy and stuff like that, and I didn't really venture into classics and stuff very much outside of school. And while I read this for school, it was just kind of life-changing for me in a lot of ways. And that is none other than Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I really can't explain like the shift that happened in here when I read this. When I first read it, I was 100% one of those people who was like, oh, this is like a tragic romance. As I got older, and the brain developed. I don't really view it as a tragic romance anymore, um, but I still deeply, deeply love this story and can, can appreciate it for what it is. It's another one of those things that I should have known early on that I really like gothic, horror, dark, kind of twisted mystery stories, as you can tell from Rebecca and the picture of Dorian Gray, um, but this was the first one I kind of read that falls into that kind of genre or category, and I was obsessed with it from the start. I mean, I love a good book about generational trauma, and this one I feel like is definitely one of the classics when it comes to that. And of course themes of breaking cycles of abuse, but also all of the like motifs and symbolism that's used in this book as well. And it was one of those things that really got me into the idea of like reading more actively and reading more intentionally to the point where for the first time I was really highlighting huge passages of the book so that I could connect one section to another section and identify different motifs of the story, like the use of windows. It really, really just changed the way that I read. And I'm sure that this isn't the book that will do that for everyone. I just feel like everyone has one of those books or at least a few of those books that kind of like clicked something in their head for them um, that made them read differently, made them a new reader. And this was definitely one of those ones for me. So I'll always have a very special place in my heart for it. Okay, next up we have my nonfiction slash poetry section. First, we're gonna start with my one poetry recommendation. I really do like reading poetry collections, but this is the one that I feel like in the past like few years that I've read has really, really stuck with me and has really um, changed the way that I feel about poetry in a lot of ways too. And that is Let Us Believe in the Beginning of the Cold Season by she was a Persian poet. She passed away in the 60s, but she's still deeply beloved and considered an iconic classic feminist writer of her time. And her poetry is just unbelievable. It's beautiful. I had never really read Persian poetry apart from like Hafez before I read this book. And it was just a really emotional experience for me. And I just, I love her work. There's so many poems in here that I've marked up and tabbed um, because they just truly stuck with me. This translation I think is really well done and I highly, highly recommend recommend it. Next up we have another book that was very formative for me, something I read in my first semester of college that gave voice to thoughts that I could not previously express and radicalized me in a lot of ways, um, and that is of course Bell Hooks's Feminism is for Everybody. This is still to this day the book on feminism that I would recommend to anybody who is interested in learning about the basics of uh, the feminist movement, feminist philosophy, and theory. This is where you should start, specifically intersectional feminism. I mean to me it's not feminism unless it's intersectional. If you're newer to a lot of these ideas, I think this will be um, more beneficial to you if feminist theory is something you've been reading for like a really long time. I don't know how much new information or um, insight this would provide for you, but if it is something that you have only really like experienced through like online discourse, um, I do think this is a fantastic book to actually read um, to get you started. I still think about it all the time. It's just one of those things that like, those books that you read as a kid that really stuck with you and shaped you. This is like the thing I read as a young adult that really stuck with me and shaped me um, and shaped a lot of my politics. Absolutely love this book. 
can't recommend it enough, love Bell Hooks as an author. So definitely had to be high on the list for the Clockwork Reader reading list. Okay, next up we have a um, nonfiction book that I feel like is one of the things that really got me into reading more nonfiction, which is something I still want to do more of. I don't read that much nonfiction. I used to a lot for school, but ever since then I just don't anymore. But I still love nonfiction as a genre. And I feel like in the past year, I've been kind of getting more and more interested in a lot of titles and I've been wanting to pick up more. So I still plan to, and I can definitely attribute reading this to that um, interest in the genre. And that book is In the Dream House by Carmen Marie Machado. Carmen Marie Machado is one of my favorite authors of all time. She has a way with words that is so beautiful, um, so moving and heartbreaking. Regardless of what genre she's writing in or the subject matter, anything she writes can make me cry. <laughs> and In the Dream House is her memoir about an abusive relationship that she was in. And it's one of the most difficult books I've ever read. It's written stylistically almost like fiction. So it reads kind of like fiction, despite the fact that it isn't. And she just has a way of weaving together this story, her story, that just moves you so deeply. Highly recommend, very difficult book to read, but so, so worth it. Okay, and then the last nonfiction book I have to recommend is actually a graphic novel. And that is is Persepolis by Majon Satrapi. This is a graphic memoir about the author's life living through the Iranian revolution and kind of like what her life was like at that time and her experiences. It was also made into a film so you can also watch the film. It's beautifully written, it's really emotional, it's also really really funny. The way she's able to balance like humor and lightheartedness in something that is obviously a very serious and disturbing and dark subject matter. It's just genius and it's done incredibly well. So yeah, definitely always one of my go-to nonfiction recommendations. Okay, so tying into that last recommendation specifically, now we have my graphic novel and manga section. So first and foremost, I absolutely have to recommend the Yona of the Dawn series. If you still haven't read these, please, please do so. <laughs> if you're looking for historical fantasy with some of the best, and I emphasize this, the best slow burn romance ever, please pick it up. The story makes a lot of political commentary that is very relevant. It's also really long, so you'll have so much to read. It's still unfinished, so there's still volumes being put out every year. There's still no end in sight. No one knows how long it's gonna go on, but there's so much content for you here, okay? Like, if you need something to binge read, this is absolutely the series. I've talked about it so many times, but I need you all to just go watch the one season of the anime, which is criminal that there's only one season, um, and then be sad about the fact that there's only one season, and then read all the manga, because you, you just have to, okay? You'll love it. I always describe it as if you like Full Metal Alchemist or um, Avatar The Last Airbender. This is kind of like a combination of those two things and as you all know those are like two of my favorite things of all time. So obviously I love this one as well and I know so many of you will too so please pick it up. If you're looking for manga, number one recommendation from me. Okay, the next graphic novel recommendation I have is, of course, Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. Everyone knows the series, everyone's watched the TV series at this point, um, but this is just a series that has meant so much to me. It was not something that I thought I was going to be that obsessed with, but ever since I've read it, it has just burrowed its way into my heart because it's just such a beautiful, heartwarming, happy story about love and friendship and identity and coming out and uh, queerness and mental health and it's just so so wonderful. If you still haven't read it, fix that. Read it, you'll love it. Okay, then my next graphic novel, this is actually technically a uh, comic, is one I haven't talked about for a really long time, but I love this series and I have loved it for so long. I'm a few volumes behind now, so I need to catch up soon, but that is of course Saga. Saga is a sci-fi series about these two planets that are at war with one another, and our main characters are from these rival planets and they fall in love, they have a child. It's a political fantasy sci-fi series with lots of uh, political commentary obviously, and um, also a lot of great great humor. It's definitely an adult series. There's some like graphic imagery in here. So just be aware of that if you decide to read it. But just, oh my God, still one of my favorites. It's been so long since I've talked about this, but to this day, I still think about this series because it's so, so well done. I hope one day we get an adaptation of this. I think that would be amazing, but who knows if that'll ever happen. But yeah, if you're looking for a comic series to read, this is my go-to. Okay, moving right along, we have my romance section. And I only have three books in this section for now because these are the ones that I feel like are the creme de la creme, the absolute top recommendations I would have, the ones that truly define my taste in romance books. And the first one I have to mention is obviously The Charm Offensive. I love this book. I read this for one of my experiment videos thinking that I would enjoy it, but I did not think that I would become obsessed and that I would love it so, so dearly. I fell head over heels in love with these characters, the chemistry, 
chef's kiss it's so good if you're really looking for a romance novel to read and you've been disappointed by a lot of the ones that you've been reading a lot of the really popular ones like i was for a while there this one is one you absolutely have to pick up okay my next romance recommendation is one that can sometimes also be categorized as like lit fic i don't really know where you would place Emily Henry, but I, I mean, most people consider her a romance writer, so that's what I'm gonna consider it. But this is my favorite Emily Henry novel, okay? This is the Emily Henry novel that to me stands above all the other Emily Henry novels, and I know this is not the popular opinion because apparently this is the most disliked one out of all of them, but I'm so sorry, you're all wrong. This is her best work, and nothing tops this, nothing even comes close to this, and that is easily Happy Place. I don't think I've talked about this on my channel yet uh, because I've only talked about it on Goodreads and maybe a little bit on Instagram or something, but I read this earlier this summer and it changed my life. It hurt me on a very deep personal level. It was like she was in my head and she was coming for me personally, okay? Like this was an attack and it hurt, but I loved it. <laughs> and to all of the haters out there who say that this one is boring, that this one is not as good as the other ones, you're so wrong. <laughs> I will die on this hill. This is her best work. I remember every other time I've read an Emily Henry book, I've talked about how I always feel like there's just one thing missing. There's just this emotional element that feels like it's lacking. Like there's just something that isn't there to push me over the edge to make me fall head over heels in love. And this book finally had it. It had that thing. And I do understand that it's like subjective. Everyone relates to different things. Everyone's been through different experiences. So you might relate more to people we meet on vacation or book lovers or something um, than you would to Happy Place. And that's completely fine. Like I get why those would be your favorite. But to say that this one isn't as good, you're so wrong. You're so, so wrong. This is the one, okay? If your reading taste is like mine and you've been let down by most of the Emily Henry books that you've read and you just didn't see what everyone else was talking about, you weren't feeling it, this is the one you need to read, okay? This is, this is the one for us, all right? In this space, this is our book. Anyway, love this book to death. Cannot get enough of it. Fantastic romance. So emotional. Destroyed me and I thank her for that. <laughs> all right, and then the last romance book I have to recommend is one that kind of stands between two genres a little bit because it's also technically fantasy, but I'd consider this more of like a romantic fantasy book um, than just straight fantasy or anything like that. And that is, of course, The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. If you like light fantasy, if you like witches, if you like a good, good emotional romance where the characters have both been through hell and they've experienced a lot of traumas and that helps them bond but not like trauma bonding bond truly bond because they open up to each other and also the main male love interest is a hot librarian i'm like what else do you need okay <laughs> like this is it this is the book i read this and i was like oh this defines my taste in romance it has the perfect pacing the perfect balance of romance as well as like other elements because it also has found family you know how much i love found family okay a romance book with found family perfect pacing and a hot librarian she wrote it for me okay she wrote it for us <laughs> do yourself a favor pick it up you'll love it it's so good it's so well written it'll make you so happy it'll make you cry and you'll feel every emotion and then you'll just come away from it feeling so deeply satisfied okay moving right along we have my next category which is lit fic and the first book i have to mention is on earth we're briefly gorgeous by ocean vong i've talked about this countless times this is a pretty popular book um i think a lot of you have probably read it the thing about this book that i feel like really defines my taste is the prose specifically the writing in this book is unreal it's beautiful you'll read certain lines and think to yourself like how could a person's brain possibly come up with something like that? And it made me tear up and cry simply from just how beautiful the writing is. As well as, of course, the subject matter because it's a very emotional book and it's really, really heavy and difficult to read. But the prose is what really, really stands out in this one to me. And it's the type of thing that I would recommend to anyone who loves beautiful writing. Next up, we have a book that I've talked about countless times as well. And it's easily one of the most difficult books I've ever read in my life. And one of the ones I still think about almost more than like anything <laughs> I've read. And that is My Dark Vanessa. You heard me talk about countless times like I said so you don't need more detail about it just always always will say look up content warnings if you decide to read this book this is not meant to be read just casually without a second thought like you really need to know what you're getting yourself into it's not easy material and it's meant to be disturbing it's meant to elicit an emotional reaction and response from you but I've said this and I'll say it again till the end of time when I talk about this book this book is written with so much empathy and so much understanding from the perspective of a person who you can clearly tell understands 
enhance this experience. And it's the empathy that's in this book that I feel like is genuinely woven through every single line and every single page that is what really, really stands out to me. Ignore the slight angle change, my camera died on me because I've been talking for way too long. But anyway, that's the thing I appreciate so much about this book because I feel like that can be hard to find sometimes in work that deals with such difficult, heavy, and dark subjects. It's just like unlike anything else I've ever read and I feel like I will be thinking about it forever. The next book in my lit fix section that I have to recommend is the only book I don't have a physical copy of yet. I've just been meaning to buy it and I still haven't. And that is Woman Eating by Claire Coda. I'm obsessed with this book. I've talked about it in like a couple videos now because it's just so good. And this was one of those things I read where I was like, oh my god, this is, it's written for me. It's, this is my taste. It's a literary fiction novel about a woman in her early 20s living on her own for the first time, but she's also a vampire and she's dealing with all of the emotions that come with being in your early 20s and moving away from home and being on your own in that way. And also the emotions of being a vampire and craving blood. And it's ripe with metaphor and symbolism and it's really difficult and gruesome sometimes to read, but it's so, so good. This is probably like my favorite lit fic book I've ever read. I feel like it's really the one that truly defines what I love and I can't stop recommending it. Okay, so next up I have a mini dystopian section um, because technically these could be clumped together with my next category, which is series, but it feels like it needs its own separate section. But first up, I have to mention none other than Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. I read this book last year and every time I talk about it, I say this, but it's just because it's true. This is probably, in terms of fiction, the best book I've ever read. It's so thought-provoking. It is unlike anything I've ever read and it is so beyond intelligent that it will make you sit there and just like stare into space for hours and make you think and contemplate and reassess everything you've ever thought. Well, maybe not everything, but at least a lot. I've mentioned multiple times on my channel that dystopian is not usually my favorite genre. And honestly, I think I could make an entire video on my specific gripes with the dystopian genre. And it's not even like the actual content of the book or anything that we're getting that's my problem with it. It's just like the irony in the way that it's presented to us and in the way that we consume dystopian content that kind of just reflects back exactly what dystopian novels often criticize. So that's kind of like where my problems with this genre kind of stem from. And it's mostly not even like the literature, it's TV and movie show adaptations of it. But anyways, all that aside, this is one of those books that is in that genre that to me defines this genre. Like this is exactly what dystopian and sci-fi should do and sets out to do. And this one just does it perfectly. The criticism and critique that's in here is so well thought out and not like preachy or in your face in any kind of way. It sets up questions for the reader to answer and think about for themselves, not for the book to solve for you, if that makes sense. And I think that's what some of the best dystopian does. And this is just some of the best out there, I think. I know I haven't read everything, but I think you'd be hard pressed to find something that would really and truly surpass this in every way. If you are into this genre in any way and you still haven't read Octavia Butler, or even if you're not that into the genre and you kind of want to get more into it, this is the one. Please read it. And then the second book I have to mention in this category has to be the one, the only, The Hunger Games. I'm gonna try and keep this as brief as I possibly can because I plan on making an entire video about this series that I am currently writing and plotting out. It's gonna be like two hours long. I have a lot to say, okay? Because I recently reread these, as in like last week, I reread the entire series for the first time since I was like 13 years old and it changed my, my life, okay? It changed my brain. I felt like I read an entirely new series. I felt like I read something that I had never read before. Even though I'd read these multiple Multiple times when I was a kid, it was just so different seeing them with the mind and the eyes of an adult and the lived experiences that I have now. It really felt like reading something brand new. And it has made this series shoot back up to probably what I would consider my favorite series of all time at this point. I used to consider this my favorite series of all time back when I was a kid and then I read so much more after that. I got really into like the fantasy romance YA and stuff like that and I really love those books and I still love them and I always will but I really think this is probably my favorite series of all time. I have become so obsessed with this again. I don't know how to explain to you all like how intense the hyperfixation is right now. I have made like a four hour long playlist on Spotify <laughs> for this series. I read Ballad of Songbird 
Birds and Snakes, made a playlist for that. I'm rereading the book right now. At the time of me filming this, the movie's not out yet, but by the time you watch it, it should be out, I think, for Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and I plan on making a video on that. So yeah, it's just, it's consumed my life, again, like completely consumed my life. I knew how significant this series was. I knew how impactful it was. I understood the commentary that she was making, but I don't think my child brain really understood how timeless and how relevant this book would remain to this day. Reading it again right now, currently, considering everything that's going on in the world, the genocide we're all currently witnessing every day on the news, it's really given me new perspective on this in a way that has just rewired something up here. <laughs> I knew that this series was a fantastic critique of the US government and US imperialism, but I didn't understand to what degree, and now I do. It's another thing that I read that shaped who I am and the way I think about things and my politics, and it has once again done that to me <laughs> as an adult now, reading it again for the first time 10 plus years later. So yeah, I just, I have so much to say about the series, okay? I promise you that video is coming. It's gonna be like my magnum opus. I'm working so hard on this video. <laughs> it's really important to me to get it right and to make it exactly the way I wanna make it and to say everything I wanna say. I get very emotional even just thinking about it. So we'll be talking about it more at a later date, but for now, this has just re-solidified its place as my all-time favorite series. Suzanne Collins is a genius. That's all there is to say. Okay, moving on to my next section. Now we have my favorite series. These are basically all actually, yeah, they're all YA fantasy series. There is something about the YA fantasy genre that I don't think I will ever escape, especially like these older ones, like these classics. There are themes and things that I think that YA explores in a way that adult often doesn't explore. And I think we do YA a disservice, specifically in the fantasy dystopian genre, oftentimes by discrediting it, when really I just just think that this category will have discussions that adult fantasy books oftentimes won't even touch. And that's not to say all of them, not at all by any means. There's so many that I really want to read that I feel like I would deeply, deeply love. I'd been putting off making this video because there are like a few series that I really wanted to read that I thought would make my list of all time, all time favorites, but I just couldn't keep waiting anymore. And so while I really do love a lot of adult fantasy, there's just something about this genre that I will never tire of. So the first book I have to mention is, of course, everyone knows this book is going to be on this list, this series, because how could it not be? And that is of course the Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare. My namesake, my original true love. Is this the greatest series of all time? No, and I would never say that it is, but this series does achieve exactly what it sets out to achieve, which is just emotional devastation in terms of relationships between these characters, and it does so brilliantly because to this day I will never not be able to think about the epilogue of Clockwork Princess. I think many of us feel this way. I don't think any of us have ever gotten over it from the time that we first read that epilogue. I read that at like 15 or something like that, I don't remember. It's never gonna get out of my head. It's so emotionally devastating and she does that so well. In terms of fantasy romance, like this is just god tier and it remains god tier. I've read so much since I first read this series and to this day, it's not even just the nostalgia of it. There's a lot that doesn't stand up to this. Like it's just not as good. Will Jem and Tessa will forever have a place in my heart. I think they'll forever have a place in a lot of our hearts. This is just a pure nostalgia series for me. It's still fantastic. I still think that it's absolutely worth the read and it's withstood the test of time, but so much of this is wrapped up in the nostalgia of the time that I read it and me getting into reading and falling in love with characters and storytelling and everything. So yeah, obviously have to mention this. Next up, we have another fantasy series that I have talked about so many times and it's been a little while I think since I've mentioned it, but I will be praising this series until my dying breath because it's that good. And that is of course the Number in the Ashes series by Saba Tahir. I see so many like YA series, new adult series that get so popular, that blow up, that people talk about endlessly, that are constantly on the New York Times bestsellers list, that have the biggest fandoms. I think you all know who I'm talking about. And those books are so unbelievably mediocre compared to something like this, that it drives me crazy that this doesn't have the same level of popularity as some of the most popular series that we see, because it deserves it. It has all of the same tropes that people like in those super popular series, but it does them better with a story that has legitimate commentary and criticism, incredible characters that you'll get deeply emotionally attached to with 
fantastic relationships, enemies to lovers, are they gonna kiss each other, kill each other, like all of those things that everybody loves in all these other series. This has all of it and it just does it 10 times better than everything else. I know this is still a popular series technically, but it's not nearly as popular as it should be. As far as fantasy series go, this is the type of political fantasy romance that I absolutely adore. This just has everything to me and it's the definition of my taste. Okay, then the last YA fantasy series I have here is one I think you're all expecting as well and that is of course Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. This duology, oh my god. <laughs> this is one of those things that I think is perfectly hyped. I know the series is incredibly popular but it deserves every single ounce of its popularity because it's as good as people say that it is. It's actually better. Another series that once again has everything, political intrigue, fantastic characters, found family, and fantastic writing, entertaining from beginning to end. It checks every single box. It's the type of thing that just never leaves your brain. You're constantly thinking about it. It always comes back to you. Sometimes I read something and like the next day it's literally gone. I can't remember a single character's name but I read something like this and it sticks with me for years and years. So that's how I know I love it so deeply. Okay, moving right along, we have two sections left. I know I've been talking for so long, I'm starting to lose my voice, but now we have fantasy standalone novels. This is the one I think I have the most books in just because this is like my favorite genre. I love a good standalone fantasy book that is dark, disturbing, mysterious, and just vibey. I love a good vibey book. And that's what I feel like a lot of these are. So of course I have to mention the book that obviously I think for most of you, you would consider at the top of the list of the Clockwork Reader reading list because it has been my favorite book for so many years, basically since I started my YouTube channel. I've said this many times now, I can't say with 100% certainty that it is still my favorite book. I'd have to reread it. I've read so much since this that I deeply, deeply love, but that has not taken away from my love of this book. And that is, of course, none other than The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This book is, to me, the perfect encapsulation of magical, character-driven fantasy with just the most immaculate vibes, fantastic atmosphere, incredible prose, and that's everything I love in a story, which is why I think this defines my taste so perfectly. And then I can't mention The Night Circus without mentioning The Starless Sea also by Erin Morgenstern. Same similar type of vibes. I love her writing. I just think she's so masterful at what she does and she's able to elicit such intense emotion and also really vivid imagery and just the atmosphere of these books is unlike anything else I've ever read. And this one is also specifically like a story about stories which is one of my favorite things of all time. So yeah, absolutely, of course, cannot make this video without mentioning these two. Next up, I have to mention Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is another book that I feel like perfectly encapsulates my taste. It's just fun, lighthearted, still emotional and deep romance fantasy story with the perfect atmosphere, the perfect vibes. It's one of those books that you read where you're like, ah, yes, this is why I love to read. From beginning to end, you're just immersed in this world and you can't even see the outside world, which is exactly what I wanna feel every time I read a book, especially a fantasy book. Also very strong Hell's Moving Castle vibes and I'm always looking for that. Next up, we have a more recent addition to this category, which is a book I read this year that again, I feel like the author went into my brain and just like dissected it a little bit and was like, oh, here, let me just like, take the thoughts that you have that you've never been able to voice and just write them down for you in the most devastating way. Um, and that is The Last Hill of the Flower Bride. Dark, disturbing, and a little bit gothic, which has, as I've said, become definitely one of my favorite genres, subgenres, categories, or whatever to read, because I love what you're able to explore in that kind of a genre. And this book does it perfectly. It's really mysterious. It's, again, like I said, the type of thing that just felt like somebody was in my head reading my thoughts and writing them down as I was reading and it was just such an utterly unbelievable reading experience for me in the best way possible. For anyone who still hasn't read this, please, please do. It's just, it's so weird. I know everyone won't like it, but this is 100% a book for the girls that get it. The girls that get it, get it, and the girls that don't, don't, and that's fine, but if you're a girl that gets it, you'll get it. <laughs> Next up, I have to, of course, mention Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed, another gothic fantasy book that I feel like changed the way I read and helped me expand my taste in reading. And I have just like so much love and appreciation for this book. Again, another really weird book that I feel like most people won't necessarily love, at least not as strongly as I do. Like I can get why you wouldn't be obsessed with this. But again, the girls that get it, get it. This is just one of those books that I read and I was like, oh no, like I, 
I understand, like I see it, I see the vision, <laughs> but it has beautiful prose, incredible writing. The imagery in here is so vivid. It's really intense. It's another really dark, disturbing book. So it has a lot of really difficult themes as well, but so magical at the same time. And those two things woven together, I think Ava Reed just does a fantastic job of creating like this balance between the dark, disturbing horror elements of it and the more whimsical elements of the story as well. And I say this every time I talk about it, but I just think about this book all the time. And again, I know it won't be for everyone, but it's definitely for me. So if you like most of the things that I have mentioned, then hopefully you will like this too. Okay, and then finally, the last book in this fantasy standalone category is um, also one that's technically dark academia, but that is none other than Babel by R.F. Kuang. This is another book I read last year for the first time and another book where I felt like the author went into my brain and was like, oh, these are the thoughts that you can't express? Let me write them down again. <laughs> it's a fantastic critique of colonialism and imperialism and the necessity of violence, which is in the original title, but they don't have it on here. Very thought provoking, the type of thing that I think a lot of people should read. I know a lot of people criticize this book by saying that the characters aren't uh, very well fleshed out, but I personally found them to be fleshed out. I deeply resonated with some of the characters. I just think this is some of the best dark academia I've ever read. There's so much about this story that just has stuck with me and I will be thinking about for so many years to come. Okay, the next section that we have is kind of like contemporary contemporary fiction and historical fiction. But this next book ties a little bit into Babel because this is also dark academia. And I didn't know where else to place this. It was kind of harder for me to place because I don't have many other books like this one exactly. I guess you could kind of also call it lit fic, but I don't know. It's more dark academia than that. That book is none other than If We Were Villains. This is another book I would probably put in my list of like top 10 favorites, ones that absolutely define my taste. This is everything I like in a book, all in one. Another book that I think is so incredibly hyped up and extremely popular but deserves all of its popularity and its fame because it's that good. ML Rio knows how to write a captivating story, knows how to write interesting characters, to write suspense, to write mystery, and to also write Shakespearean levels of tragedy, uh, quite literally. And this is another example of something I would call just a perfect book. If you have been avoiding this because of the hype and you're worried that it won't live up to it, I can promise you if, again, you like the stuff that I like, if we have similar taste, you're gonna like this, it's gonna live up to the hype for you. Your heart is gonna break and you're gonna feel devastated, but you're also gonna curse yourself for not having read it sooner. Okay, the next book I have to mention is also another one that's technically a series, but I've only ever read the first book, and I know you can read the first book without having to read the rest of them, it can stand on its own, but that is of course The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Reed Zafon. This is another book that from the time I've read it years and years ago at this point, I've still never been able to stop thinking about it. It's historical fiction set during the time of the Spanish Civil War. And another book that's a story about stories. I really just love that as a trope or a theme, the idea of like who gets to tell our stories and what stories we choose to tell. Um, and this book definitely explores some of those things. It's also a murder mystery and it's really suspenseful. And it's just unlike anything else I've ever read. I definitely consider this a classic at this point and something that that I think any historical fiction fan should absolutely read. But also if you like things similar to like If We Were Villains, I really think you should read this as well. It's definitely the type of book that's for people who like to read. I find that I really gravitate towards those types of stories. Okay, next up I have to mention As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow. This is another book I read this year for the first time. It's kind of like contemporary lit fic set during the time of the Syrian revolution. And we follow our main character who is a doctor, well, she's actually a pharmacy student who is working as a doctor. Um, trying to help. She and her family are also trying to escape. And it's just so heartbreaking. This book is so emotional. It'll make you so sad. It will make you cry, but it has some of the best emotional suspense I think I've ever read. It's just so devastating and so beautifully written. Another book where the story is just laced with empathy. You can feel how personal this story was to the author and that's something I always love in a good book when you can tell that this really meant something and that comes across on the page and it really does in this book. I really think more people should read it because it's also an incredibly important subject matter as well. Also just fantastic characters, a lot of Ghibli references. The writing is also just kind of whimsical in its own way too and it's again just everything, everything I love in a good book. Okay next up I have to mention a book that I feel like for so long defined my taste and especially like contemporary YA contemporary fiction and a book that to this day I still deeply love despite the fact that I still never read the sequel and I haven't read it for a really long time but this book just means so much to me and that is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. If you've been here since the beginning 
you know how much I used to talk about this book, okay? It's just been a really long time and I've read so much since then, but my mind still comes back to this and I think it always will. This is one of the best coming of age stories I think I've ever read and I know the movie came out recently, uh, but it was only in theaters for like a week, maybe like less than a week and I wasn't able to see it because it wasn't in any theaters near me. And I was so, so sad because I really want to see the film. I really hope that it's good, but it made me think about the book again. And so obviously like I had to mention it in this video because it's still something that I feel like is so, important to me even after all these years. This was the first YA contemporary book I'd ever read with like a queer couple as like the main characters. It's a really fantastic story about coming out, growing up, falling in love, being young. And I've read a lot of books now with in the same genre with the same themes that explore the same themes but this one still stands out to me there's just something so deeply moving about this story and something that feels at this point like really nostalgic to me since I read it so long ago and it was at such a pivotal time in my life as well. Okay and we have finally reached the very last book in this video. I don't know how many books I've gone through, I'm really losing my voice at this point, but this is the final final one and one that is incredibly important to me um, and another book that like really changed the way that I read, changed who I am as a person at a really young age, and that is of course The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I don't think I can properly explain the feeling of being 15, 16 years old and reading this book for the first time. It changed the way that I read, it changed the way that I look at reading and writing and storytelling. This book just explored themes that at that age I feel like I had never seen discussed in this way and that was something that I think I really needed at that time and I think there's a reason that it's remained such a classic and why it's withstood the test of time and why so many people still to this day discover it and still really love it. But yeah, it's another book that I think I will be thinking about and hopefully rereading again soon. Maybe I'll just go back and reread a lot of the books I loved as a kid because apparently seeing them with adult eyes for the first time really changes things for you. And I feel like that might be a really worthwhile experience. But yeah, of course, had to mention this one because it will always be a classic and a favorite to me. But there you all have it. That is it for my A Clockwork Reader reading list, my favorite books of all time. Like I said, there are definitely other books that I would consider all-time favorites that I deeply, deeply love. I did try to narrow this down as much as I could, okay, to pick just like the few that really, really define my taste, even though there are so many more books that I absolutely love. Um, so please don't feel like hurt if I didn't mention something. I still love those books. I really do. I just, I had to, I had to pick just a few, even though this is so many. <laughs> Again, another reminder to check out the A Clockwork Reader book club on Fable. The link is in the description box below. Be sure to join the book club there. Introduce yourselves. I'm so excited to get started on our first book. If there are any books that you think that I should read based on the reading list that I gave you here, um, based on my taste that you think I'd really love, that you think would fit into any of these categories, please leave your recommendations down below. I always love taking your recommendations and reading what you recommend because I have faith in you all. You guys know my taste really well and I trust you. So I will always take your recs. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!